So I'm going to set a stage for you. I'll ask you to picture yourself in the year 1900. You're sitting on a street corner. When you look down at the street, that street is made of dirt, right? Because most streets in the country are not paved yet. When you're looking at the traffic on that street, it's all horses and buggies because cars are just a novelty at this point. As you're looking to the corner itself, you're seeing a lamppost, and a lamppost is about eight foot tall. There's no electricity in that lamppost. What it is, is it's actually powered by oil. And there's a gentleman every night who comes out, and it's his job to take a ladder, walk up to that lamppost, put it against that lamppost, climb to the top of the ladder, and light that lamp. To your right is newspapers. You see a newsstand there. And on that newsstand are newspapers from all over the world, and all of them have the same headline. It's all about jobs. What is that headline going to say? What it's going to say is that 94% of all jobs are going to be gone by the year 2020. This isn't fake news. This is absolutely what happened. This is real. Between the year 1900 and the year 2020, 94% of all jobs in the world went away. Why? Why did it happen? Well, it's very simply machines, right? We used machines to replace human effort. What used to be human muscle became machines. Where we used to have a thousand people with picks and shovels and axes, we can now completely replace that work with 15 human beings with the right machines. Just in the agriculture market alone, in the year 1900, 50% of the world population worked in agriculture. Today, it's barely 2%. Most of those jobs, most of the jobs that are being displaced by machines were hard labor jobs, right? They were work jobs where you're very physical in that nature. And in those physical jobs, there were also some jobs that just, just plain sucked, right? Jobs that nobody really ever wanted to do. I'm going to give you an example of one of those jobs. Uh, the pregnant horse urine collector. Yeah, so if you didn't catch that, pregnant horse urine collector. Not just horse urine, but pregnant horse, right? I can't imagine a single person in the country or on the planet who really wanted that job. It's a job that I'm sure absolutely everybody was happy was gone so they could do something else. In fact, I'd take a while, I guess even the horse was probably happy that job went away. <laughs> so what's the headline today? The headline today, if you pull out your phone, it looks a little different. It's all smart instead of paper. But the headline today looks the same. 94% of all jobs are going to go away in the next X amount of years. Well, why? What's changed? What's the disruptor now? The disruptor is artificial intelligence. We have found a way to not replace muscle, but now with artificial intelligence, we can replace the mind. A complete change in how we have the opportunity to do work going forward. So, of course, this raises stomach acid galore for people. In fact, most of the time, just saying artificial intelligence gets people kind of riled up. And why wouldn't it, right? Most of you, the only experience we have with it is watching on sci-fi shows and you watch Terminator versus Robocop kind of stuff, right? Robots here to kill us. That's all we ever really know of AI. But stomach acid is going up. Well, once you get past that and you start talking to reality, everybody always says, what about my job? And when I go and talk about this, if I get 50 questions, 50 questions are pretty much about what about my job? What happens to my job in different ways? In fact, this has become so massive a conversation now that we have people talking about universal basic income. A universal basic income is a guaranteed income from the government to every single person in the nation to ensure that you get a monthly salary because they don't believe there's going to be enough jobs. So, let me add a little balance to this conversation, right? So I've given you the doom and the gloom, and I want to give you, instead of that, the opportunity. I mean, after all, in the year 1900, it was absolutely true 
94% of jobs are going to go away over that 100 years period of time. But the reality is, is today we're sitting at a point where we have a very rare crossover curve where we actually have more job openings today than we have workforce. That is an amazing event that is extraordinarily rare. How did that happen, right? How did we go through that? Those opportunities are out there going forward with artificial intelligence as well. So let me start here. Let me just ask you a simple one. When does time fly by? When you're having fun, when you're excited, when you're engaged, when you're doing things you like to do, hopefully when you're at a TED Talk, right? That's when time flies by. And when are you bored out of your skull? Pretty much when you're at work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, 55% of all people are bored every single day at work. People hate boredom. They despise boredom. In fact, if I'm boring for as little as, say, 14 seconds here, every single one of you is going to be trying to sneak your phone out and look at your threats because it's like, oh, I can't handle it. Right? We can't deal with boredom. Nobody likes that. So what are computers really good at? What is artificial intelligence really good at? It is really good at commodity, predictable, repeating, mundane, boring work. So if we let the technology take that work, what does that do for us, right? What is the opportunity for humanity if we accept that the technology can actually do stuff that frankly we never wanted to do anyway, we just have to do because it's part of our jobs. So what is the opportunity? It's innovation. If you are empowered to be able to ask the courageous questions what can we do, right? The questions that we need to ask, what about, how might we, what could we, what's out there? So let's roll back to the year 1900 really fast. So in the year 1900, how big was the aerospace industry? It didn't even exist yet, right? The Wright brothers didn't happen for a couple more years. How big was the automotive industry? There were cars, sure, it was this big. How many electricians were there? How many plumbers were there, right? The vast majority of the world still had outdoor plumbing, not indoor plumbing. Almost no one in the world had electricity in their homes. What were the opportunities? What's the telecommunications industry look like in the year 1900? How about the computer industry, right? How about uh, app makers, right? How about another example going forward around all of those technologies? None of them existed in the year 1900. That's why we were able to get to where we are today. What will AI do? It will give us the capacity to innovate in ways we never have before. So people look at me and they say, cool, I'll get to do more cool things. That's great, but what will my job be? Honestly, I have no idea. I honestly have no idea, but I will tell you this. So again, pull up my little cell phone here. Uh, Let's go back to the year, say, 2004. It's the year my daughter was born. In 2004, how many app developers were there? None, right? How many blockchain developers were there? Practically none. How many AI developers were there? Practically none. And these are all multi, multi-billion dollar industries just 15 years later. Huge, huge possibilities. So what will happen going forward? Lots and lots of jobs. If we take away the mundane, if we take away those irritating individual things that we have to do that a computer can easily run through, how many more brilliant people can we create in the world? How many more Marie Curries do we need in this world? How many more Albert Einsteins do we need? There are problems that we have that artificial intelligence is just never going to fix, right? So we have massive climate issues. We have huge population explosions. We have energy issues. We need more brilliant minds. And if we free people from sitting in that cube, they will have that opportunity. Let's just talk uh, for a moment. I mentioned universal basic income. So with universal basic income, we are taking a 10,000-year-old solution and applying it to a problem that doesn't quite exist yet. 
what if we empower that courageous question? If we've given people that capability to ask that courageous question, what question would you ask? What is another way? Well, how about this one? Do we need money anymore? Do we? We've been watching on the, uh, the less dystopian sci-fi and our more uh, utopian sci-fi for the last 70-some years the possibility of a world where all of humanity is empowered and can look at the possibilities and that our purpose isn't to make money on a day-to-day -day basis, but to be able to make ourselves and our people and our culture and our communities better. What can we empower when we take away that boring? So when we look to our posterity, 50 years from now, they look back at us. They're going to laugh at us, right? They will absolutely laugh at us. The same way everybody here laughed at pregnant horse urine collector, right? A job that we're like, oh, who would do that? Nobody would ever do that job. They're going to look the same way. 50 years from now, they're going to look back at us and they're going to go, oh, data entry specialist? Who would do that, right? Who would do that, right? We have people laughing about that now. But why would you want to? Because the opportunity is immense. When you take away the commodity, the repeating, the predictable, the mundane, and the boring, you unbridle the human mind. You give us the possibility to reach to the stars. You give us the capability to look at all of the possibilities and ask the courageous questions. And that is why every one of us should want to be replaced by a computer. Thank you.